Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the College Express podcast. The College Express podcast comes to you every single month at the first week of the month, and we bring you different topics all about college. My name is Tyler, and as always, I'm joined with Mackenzie and Karen. And today we have a very special guest, Katie. So Katie, if you could introduce yourself, tell us what you do here and uh, where you went to school. Yeah, so my name's Katie. I'm currently a digital advertising associate at Carnegie Dartlet. Um, I went to school at University of Massachusetts Lowell, better known as UMass Lowell. And I'm excited to join you guys today. All right, so today we're gonna to be talking all about cash money <laughs> and college. <laughs> so we'll just uh, jump right into it. So our first question today is, um, it's a joint question, what are the best websites and organizations to receive scholarships from and how do you know that they aren't fake? Uh, and these questions come jointly from Instagram at Kala underscore zero one zero seven and from Twitter at Kate Rick and a bunch of numbers, I think. <laughs> Seven, five, six, three, six, five, two, four. Sounds like an account number. <laughs> That's the social security number. Yeah, so yeah there we go. I'm Kate Brick, yeah. and now you have her identity. Yeah. Um, so obviously the best place to go for scholarships is collegeexpress.com slash scholarships. Um, <laughs> you have to say that because um, we have a ton of money there that you can look for. Uh, but there are really a bunch of different websites and organizations that you can go to. Uh, you can get them directly through the school when you apply. Uh, Google does their Doodle for Google scholarship, which is everyone's racing toward. Uh, check your parents' companies, like whatever companies they work for. Go and see, just kind of look at their website, see if they offer any scholarships. Um, and anything that they might be a part of. My parents were members of the Sicilian Association, and I got a scholarship from them. It was like maybe a few hundred bucks, I think $500, but that went directly to my school books, and I did not have to pay for textbooks that semester. It was great. Um, and really just knowing how that they won't be fake, the first thing is to do is just research. So if you know it's a legitimate company, so like I, going through the Sicilian Association, I knew it was a legitimate company, and we've been like working with them for years. We've been members of their um, association for years. Um, your parents' companies are legit unless they work for a shell mm -hmm. company, in which case, research that and call, call the authorities. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, basically just, just research and, and making sure it's not too good to be sure, essentially. Like if it's too good to be true, it probably is. Yeah, and I think just going off that point too, if you're going on a lot of websites uh, now more than ever, and as time progresses, yeah. like SSL is a big thing uh, for security, and you're going to see if you look in Google Browser, there's a little icon up at the top uh, that says, okay, this is a secure site. Uh, you want to make sure that you know these companies are going through those things. You can always jump onto a Google form or a Reddit, wherever you want to go to, and just say, hey, is this company legit? Uh, go through everything and just and just double check that, especially when it comes to web, because yeah. you might find something that's like, hey, win a million dollar scholarship and just give us all your information yeah. and then never hear from them again. And your identity stolen like Kate Rick. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Yeah. All moves back. <laughs> I think also most uh, websites will have like a contact page. And so if they have like a phone number and email address, I mean, still be aware of like the email they're sending back to you and make sure it's legit as well. But, you know, if you can contact them and ask them a few questions about it and they respond to you, it's probably legit. And if you just Google the scholarship and it's like comes up on Google as one of the first um, options, usually it's pretty legit because Google's not going to have a fake website at the top of their search yeah. bar. So it's another way to figure it out. Also check for things like um, accreditation. So like look at the Better Business Bureau. If they're accredited by them, they're usually pretty legit. Um, as companies uh, and sort of if they're listed on multiple scholarship sites like if they're listed on like College Express and the College Boards one or CapEx and all that uh, which all have scholarship searches that it's more likely to be legit because those companies go through and vet and make sure that the scholarships are legit for you. Yeah you made a good point about the Bez Better Business Bureau. Yeah. If I can speak that a good. The BBB. The, yeah, the BBB. Uh, so when you're looking, a lot of the companies will actually have that in their footer or yeah. in the About Us section, uh, and then it will link off, and you can actually see their rating on the Better Business Bureau. So that's definitely one thing to do. But if they it's just a listing for a scholarship and it lists who's sponsoring that scholarship, jump to the sponsor to see if they have that rating on it uh, instead of just 
this is the site I'm on, and that will give you a little bit more of a clear idea if they're legit or not. And also going back to College Express, in case you don't know that much about what they offer, is if you are registered, you get an email every Saturday called Scholar. Scholarship Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> uh, get them from me. <laughs> and it's just kind of um, a few scholarships that are coming up with due dates recent, um, coming soon. And so you can apply to those and they're every week. So you can apply to three scholarships every week. Um, and then also just registering on College Express enters you into the $10,000 Carnegie Dartlet scholarship, which is awarded every year. So that's a huge bonus as well. Yeah, that's a, a couple of things. I can definitely dive in, into College Express a little bit more because I work on the website nonstop. <laughs> but uh, the um, keeping track of everything and having the Scholarship Saturday is a fantastic tool. You get that every single week of, hey, here's some upcoming deadlines. And it's it's good if you're lazy um, <laughs> just because you're not proactively going out and searching for those scholarships. And then they're coming right into your inbox. So you can just work with that and grab things and, and say, okay, this is, works for me. This doesn't work for me. It's not really tailored directly to you, uh, but it is those upcoming scholarships. If you do want something more tailored to you, College Express has seven billion dollars worth of scholarships in our database and you can search by keyword interest and you can also refine your search by your GPA, SAT, and your academic grad year. So that makes it a little bit more easy to find stuff that's more relevant to you and that you're more apt to get that scholarship because it's something that you're interested in and it also fits your qualifications. So that's a big benefit. You can also check your state's website. Um, I've just been doing a bunch of research um, recently about in-state tuition waivers and in-state tuition like um, uh, scholarships that you can find and you don't really need to do extra to apply to it. So for Massachusetts, there's the John and Abigail Adams Scholarship, which if you score a certain amount on your MCAS that you take in public school, you get a tuition waiver, free tuition to uh, Massachusetts state schools that qualify. <clears throat> Excuse me, and there's no additional things to do for that. So look into opportunities like that in your states, um, where and just do research and ask your teachers, ask your guidance counselors, go to your guidance counselors That's to ask about know. scholarships, mm -hmm. um, because even then your school might have uh, scholarships available to you. I know we had an award night my senior year where we all went to a location. I don't remember where, but we went to. Um, uh, like an auditorium and they would call up seniors and they would give them scholarships that were funded by alumni. So ask your um, your guidance counselor what scholarships like that you might be able to apply for or what might be available to you that you might just win in general. Yeah, and there's uh, definitely a unique approach to some of them too. Like we had one of our close friends in high school was going for aviation and so the only kid in our high school going for aviation. So he won every single scholarship that was supplied by our high school yeah. for aviation. Uh, so going to your guidance counselor and being aware of what the school offers, and you mentioned alumni, which is great, uh, what the alumni offer, and finding your niche and, and swimming into that to yeah. pick up some extra cash. Yeah, just going off of that, I think one of the biggest things to remember is to utilize all of your resources. Um, you know, there's an abundance of scholarships, large and small. Um, they all can go a really long way. You know, use your school, your local community, guidance counselors, College Express, you know, there's so many different ways to kind of connect yourself to these scholarships that are out there. So just, you know, sit down, organize yourself, you know, figure out what you're really looking for and you can organize yourself that way and kind of dive into the scholarship search. And um, don't always go for the huge scholarships. So like there's, is it Dr. Pepper that does the like full tuition scholarship, mm -hmm. but it's, there are thousands of applicants. It's really difficult to win. I'm not saying you'll do it, yeah, but yeah. don't, don't attempt it. One person, wins, it. One person yeah. wins that, um, like those ones where very few people win, um, are harder to get, but go for the smaller ones. Cause if you get five, $500 scholarships, that's better than winning one $1,000 scholarship. Um, in the long run because you get more money and usually fewer people apply to the smaller scholarships because they say, oh, it's a hundred dollars. Like, what's that going to do? Buy me a textbook? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. but <laughs> that's one textbook you don't have to buy. That's a nice thing too about the smaller ones are like, 
They're just quirky and yeah. fun ones that uh, we have a list on College Express that's like the 20. The ultimate easy scholarship list just well, yeah. updated this there's, week. There's the ultimate easy scholarship list, but there's also the uh, weirdest scholarships. Um, yes, there's a list on that, yeah. Yeah, and there are some very bizarre ones. So it's just fun to see what is yeah. offered out there and then be like, oh, this is like something I, there's one for duct tape. Yeah, the duct tape crown dress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that really? Yeah, it's a lot of fun. So if you need a prom dress <laughs> and have or, a lot of duct tape, yeah, and you and you're you're very creative, go try for the duct tape one. That's right. Yeah. So you could get some money for, for college. After you, <laughs> you sweep the prom. That's also really helpful if you do that and you're like not sure of what your major is, because there are a lot of ones that are like very specific to majors. Um, like I know there's one for mortuary science and if you're like considering you're like I like uh, medicine and all that science stuff but I don't like people mortuary science is perfect for you because you don't actually have to interact with people I was wondering how you're pointing the pilot <laughs> no. I was ripping off people <laughs> ripping off what you were saying yeah. um, um, <laughs> I was like, did you study that? No, no, no. <laughs> Although my grandfather design. was actually. See, yeah, that, I knew yeah. that. Yeah. I totally knew that. Yes, yeah. Um, which is not something I bring up ever to anybody. So, <laughs> welcome to my family. <laughs> hey, it's a good business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's almost as good as it being an accountant. <laughs> almost. <laughs> almost. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's just as constant. True, true. Um, yeah, I think um, also just uh, looping back to it too, if you're having a rough time searching for scholarships, there it's on College Express, so I'm a little biased here, but there are ways you can just jump into it and then see like what people are searching for. And so College Express has our most popular searches of the year, which are down at the bottom, and then the most recent searches too. So even if something's really popular, I know... Uh, most recent and popular always is no essay. So I yeah. do lazy kids out there. Um, no essay scholarships are big. So if you type that in, you're gonna find a bunch of scholarships that are, hey, you don't have to write an essay for this. This is how you apply. Um, and then also just um, going out and finding like stuff like the College Express, Carnegie Dartlet, uh, our parent company offering the $10,000 scholarship. All you have to do is register and then you're entered to win that. So uh, there's, very easy ones that, hey, why not? It takes five minutes of my time, max. Yeah. Um, just jump in and do it. You can also look specifically at companies. So Microsoft does scholarships um, for students internationally um, as well as nationally. Um, so look into like those big companies be like, oh, I wonder if this company does scholarships. And most likely they do. I mean, a lot of Fortune 500 companies especially, you don't necessarily have to like have a parent that works for them. You don't have to work for them. The, you can just apply for them. Um, and they, again, those get a larger application pool, but they can, if that doesn't hurt to apply, yep. um, you're never gonna lose money. And if, if they're, you're being charged for a scholarship service, uh, not usually the best thing. If it's like an entry to a contest that you're paying, it's less so um, of an issue. But if you're like paying for a service to show you scholarships, that's, don't do that. There are free resources like College Express. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, just looking back, I know you said um, with Sicilian uh, member. Yeah, the Sicilian Association. Uh, that yeah, the different um, groups and organizations in your hometown. Like even if you're very religious, uh, I know like certain churches yeah. and uh, you know whatever affiliation you have, the, those groups usually offer something. Depending on you mentioned parent companies, but. Even like working for a movie theater, they might have something that ties into it. Uh, so whatever your part-time job is. McDonald's just started doing scholarships and Dunkin' Donuts for people that work for them. Yeah. Um, I know at least in New Hampshire, Dunkin' Donuts has a scholarship thing because there's like an ad for it when you go through the drive through Got it. Yeah, they're like, work for us, you can get scholarship. I'm like, what? Do you have to enter the scholarship or is it just if you work there, you get a scholarship? I don't know the, the details on that, mm -hmm. but that's some research. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And McDonald's did that that commercial, uh, I want to say like a year ago, where it had like the kid got their college acceptance letter and brought it into work and it said McDonald's giving scholarships to, to schools. And I'm like, that's really cool because a lot of people work at these fast food restaurants to earn money in high school, to earn money in college. And it could end up paying you back more. So look into those at, at the places you work. And it doesn't have to be as big as McDonald's. I mean, even local companies sometimes have that. Yeah. 
Yeah, I worked at Market Basket in high school, and I found out that if you work there and you send them your information, they give you a scholarship every year. You just have to reapply. I didn't know that until I was in my senior year of college, <laughs> and uh, a little too late, but that's a good resource as well. If you're from the New England area and work at Market Basket, <laughs> go check that out. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. That's, a, that's the thing is uh, just look everywhere, apply to everything. Yep. And as Kara mentioned earlier, uh, winning five smaller scholarships yep. is better than winning none at all or one larger one that doesn't pay off as much. Yep. So I think that's really the key thing to remember here. Yep. All right. So question number two is what were some of the ways you earned money while in college? How was money managed if you qualified for work study in college? And this comes from Tracy, with an extra E, love16 at Instagram. So I'll just uh, kick it off is work study positions are usually, well, not usually, they are linked to the FAFSA. Uh, so if you don't know what the FAFSA is, I actually have it written down somewhere, so I'm gonna get it exactly because I always screw it up. But FAFSA stands for Free Application for Federal Student Aid, if you didn't know, which you probably will know, and then you'll forget, like I do, and then you'll just know it as fast. But go down, apply for that right off the bat. Even if you don't think you're gonna qualify for it, apply for it, uh, you never know what you're gonna get. So they'll allocate money, and then you'll be able to get some of that money, and that's all from the government, so that you can use it. Now, with the work-study program is that they're allocating money specifically to the school, and then the school can dish it out to you so you can gain it back. There are, Easy ways, especially if you qualify for work study, which I qualified for, uh, to get a job on campus. And you just basically go up and you say, hey, I'm looking for a job to fill my work study. Uh, what's available? And you can do that at the resources office at the, the school. I really wanted to work in the tech lab, which is very nerdy. Uh, so I went down. I actually had an interview with uh, the head of IT. I can't remember his name now. But I want to throw you under the bus, and I can't remember your name. <laughs> uh, but I did not get the job. Uh, so I ended up working in the gym, uh, which is fine. Uh, but uh, you can get a job anywhere, uh, depending on what you want to do and if they have open avail availability. Either way, if you get a job that's in the field that you like, you get to study while you're there and you get to learn more hands-on approach while you're there. And then if you don't get the job you like and you're working at a gym, you can still do your work at the gym because it's usually not super crowded uh, depending on where you go I mean it, like, your gym could be insane but uh, depending on hours and then where people are I had a lot of free time to just do homework and focus on school work while I was there so that's how you get into work study is by applying to the FAFSA and then seeing if you're allocated any money and then jumping in uh, and then on top of that well to actually bring back another point is usually they'll only allow you to work between five to 15-ish hours a yeah. week. Um, and that's really to focus on your studies. Although sometimes that money doesn't cut it and you need more. So um, you'll be familiar with the Roxy down in Burlington. Yeah. So I used to work at the Roxy down in Ooh. Burlington uh, specifically to get free movie tickets. <laughs> <laughs> and so that was like a great benefit and a great tip for my uncle when I was growing up was like, if you can get a job at a movie theater, you get free movies and you don't have to pay for them. And free popcorn. And free popcorn too, yeah. So, that's that's solid. Solid. yeah. That's good. Uh, so pro tip is uh, get a job, even if it's for two days at a movie theater, you can go see movies free. <laughs> uh, and that earned me a little bit of extra cash as well. And to round off my long-winded discussion there <laughs> for myself, and then you guys feel free to jump in at any point. The uh, other way was as I started getting towards my end of the year, or yep. end of my college career, I should say, is going through internships. Yep. And getting, a lot of the internships you're gonna get are non-paid, uh, but towards the end when you have enough skills and enough mm -hmm. uh, rapport yep. with people, <laughs> you're able to get in and say, okay, like here's the work that I've done in the previous years, now I'm a senior, and. I think I should be getting paid. You can have a little bit of more wiggle room and, and talking with people. And so my senior year was all about doing web stuff and I ended up doing a couple, three different websites while I was in school and getting paid a pretty substantial amount of money to finish off the year, which was great. So that's really the, 
<laughs> no way to do it. <laughs> so I actually have a question for you about work study because I didn't sure. qualify, so I wasn't able to do it. But if you qualify, the, is the school guaranteed to offer you a job? Or I, I is don't, it just what's available? Yeah, I don't believe they're required to give you a job. Uh, it's if they have any positions available. So if you're picky, like if I was like, I only work, work for tech, like, <laughs> that, that's all I want to do, and like that, that's it. They'll be like, well, it's too bad. I'm a we freshman don't. who will only work for tech. Yeah, yeah like, <laughs> we, we don't have that job opportunity for you. Uh, we can get you a job. They'll definitely try to place you yeah. somewhere to get you that, that money, but if you refuse to take whatever job they're giving you, or if you just don't apply for one. I had friends who did that. They were like, I have no money. I'm like, you have work study. And they're like, I don't want this job. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. So if you if you want that money, you do have to work at a job. I had a lot of friends that worked in the cafeteria and they hated it, but True. they yeah. got a standard paycheck every other week. Mm. And I was like, that's pretty cool. Like it's, and that's one of the, like, I think the main places And it works with work. their school schedule. And it works with your school schedule. They, they nice. work to help you make sure it works around your schedule. They're not going to book you during the, they're not going to schedule you during the class because you're going to the college to get, um, to get an education and they're not going to try to stop you from getting an education. Whereas if you work at a local store they might be like, well, we need you on this day. And you're like, I have a final that day. And they're like, yeah. too bad. <laughs> Especially if it's a retail store and yeah. they have, um, so, oh, not overstocking, but when they're doing, oh, they're doing the inventory. Yeah. Inventory. Inventory is the worst thing in the world. <laughs> and uh, I just want to state that, yeah, I, I worked retail for way too many years, and the inventory days were the bane of my existence because yeah. you were there for twelve to fourteen hours just counting items. Yeah. We did that at Market Basket. Yeah. I always got stuck in like the canned food yeah. aisle, just counting every single can in that aisle. At like worst. ten o'clock at night because you have to do it when they close. <laughs> yeah, and because you're over eighteen, like you have the ability to work yeah. those hours. Whereas in high school, they can't make you work past certain hours because of child labor laws. <laughs> so like you don't get stuck as long for inventory. And you're like, oh, it's ten o'clock. You can't let me stay here any longer. Two cans. And they're yeah. Like, all right, get out of here. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry. You you have to go. You have to go because I, I worked on a dock for a summer and we worked. Um, we. It was downtown and um, I was in Cambridge and we would rent out can, um, canoes and kayaks for people to go see the fireworks from the 4th of July. That's sweet. And you had, the work was from like 9 to 2 o'clock in the morning and you could only work that if you were over 18 because you could, um, minors couldn't work those hours. And you got good money. Like you got hourly plus a bonus for working late. So all the miners wanted to work it. Yeah. Um, and it, so it was decent money but you know it it was horrible because the next day I had to get up and go to work again. Yeah, those hours are like, if you don't have a job. Yeah. <laughs> or you don't have school. That's, yeah. That's a sweet, sweet time. Slot. You can live off no sleep. Like, that works, but if, you, if you're doing late night stuff, but, or if you, if you manage to, like, yeah, <laughs> schedule late classes. If you right. like, don't have a class before 2 o'clock, yeah. those could work for you, but not recommended. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's hard. Um, budgeting yourself in college isn't easy. And I know for me, I struggled. Um, I was an out-of-state student. So, you know, every holiday I went home to New Jersey. So no, like, retail stores wanted me because yep. they needed people for the holidays. Um, and then on top of that, I was a student athlete. So with my academic and athletic schedule, maintaining a job was one of the hardest things. And I ended up, this is not sponsored, by the way, but I ended up, <laughs> downloading the Poshmark app and I basically went through my closet, jewelry, shoes, you know, and I listed them and over the course of I think my undergrad I made $600. It nice. um, wasn't consistent but it was still some type of income and then I also coached 12 year old girls yeah. um, field hockey on the weekends and it was just cash that I had for gas, you know, if I wanted to get some coffee, fuel the Feel the coffee addiction. Um, so there are definitely ways for you to make money. There are a lot of resources available. Um, so it's all about kind of finding, you know, what works for you and your schedule and, and, you know, your free time and managing it that way. Yeah, it was kind of the same way because I was out of state. So I had a summer job and I would just work all summer trying to save up because no one wanted to hire me in school because I was only there for a few months. And um, it just didn't work well with people, but I did end up finding jobs on campus. Um, like I was in a sorority and when I moved into the house, they actually needed people in the kitchen doing the dishes and just keeping the kitchen clean. So I did that for I think about a year and it worked well because they also worked around my schedule. 
Um, and it was just an easy job and it was not a lot of pay, but it was something to help with gas money and just any other things I have to pay for in college. You just kind of keep money rolling in the bank account. <laughs> it's anything you can do. Yeah, I think uh, for us too, when we're talking about just budgeting, cutting cost savings and whatnot, was in college I had three guys that I ended up living with, uh, sophomore and junior and senior year that we just formed like a tight back and yeah. ended up riding with those guys. And we came to an early decision on that for groceries, which is can be really expensive or really cheap depending yeah. on how you want to roll. Uh, we decided that we were going to rotate who bought groceries every week and then that person would pick the meals that we would cook that week. So it was really up to whoever was cooking that week to be like, okay, we want to eat really nice and we're going to have like great meals this week because I'm paying. Yeah. And then we'd have one of my friends roll and be like, okay, I'm cheap as dirt and we're having hot dogs and beans like four nights a week. Like, All right. Uh, so it was a, a nice way when we decided to be like, okay, we're going to have a rotating schedule. People are going to pay what they want to pay or... Yeah. You know, and it just worked out very well. I'm not saying that works for everybody. Uh, I've had a lot of conversations with people, and like, there is no way that would work. We yeah. like, we had our own separate milk, and yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. So it, it, I mean, it really depends. But having roommates that you can rely on and split costs with, yeah. uh, even having a roommate that has a car, I mean, like, hey, can you drive me from point A to point B? And you know, I'll, I'll chip in like two dollars or whatever it is. You know, just to get yeah. me there. Uh, and they're already on their way that way anyway. Go for it. Yeah. Uh, no, the roommate that had to buy the groceries that week, did they also have to cook? <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> we, we decided, again, early on that Logan and myself would cook. Logan taught me a lot about cooking. Still not a great cook, but in college, I learned a lot. Check out coming. his cooking in the microwave videos. <laughs> yes, yes. 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 Oh, if you want to best. become a true master chef, <laughs> the microwave is your best friend. But uh, Logan and I would cook, and then Izor and Steve would clean up. And yeah. more so, Izor cleaned up. Sorry, Izor. Steve just went in his room and Aww. went away. Yeah. But, yeah. Actually, clean up if you're the roommate that's going to clean up, because <laughs> that can cause a lot of tension. Especially if someone else is doing the cooking. Mm. The least you can do is yeah. clean. The worst so. thing you can do as a roommate is when your roommate gets sick of you not cleaning up and goes to clean it up, never, ever say, oh, I was just about to do that. Because it makes everything worse. <laughs> That's not only we roommates. Both know you're lying. <laughs> but my wife. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Same thing. And you should totally use and abuse your student ID. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Kind of still milk it sometimes at some places, unfortunately. But if you have your student ID on you, uh, a lot of places offer student discounts. Yeah. I think everybody knows that being a student is a struggle sometimes, yeah. especially when it comes to money. Um, so I know this local place near my school, um, this really nice, I would say like kind of like a cafe, they offered student discounts and it just, you just save a couple bucks here and there. It just kind of helps in the long run. Um, I know like the shopping outlets have student discounts, maybe the movie theaters, I'm not sure. Yeah. So just, you know, do your research, see what you can do. So if you're trying to fall on a budget, you can help the student ID. <laughs> Going back to ways to earn money in college, um, if you have a local job, see if it, a local job in a company that has many locations, like if you work at a McDonald's or a Dunkin' Donuts, see if you can transfer, or even yeah. if you work in retail, see if you can transfer to a different store that's in the area. Um, that way you keep that job. Um, I didn't really have that option because my summer job was a local business. Um, my winter job was a local business, but you can also plug those sorts of, so I worked as a ski instructor for a while and um i was talking to uh one of the sort of older instructors and he said oh i know people at jay's peak and i said oh, that's jay's great. peak is yeah. one of the best mountains ever it's great go there yeah and he's like i can get your job there and then i looked at it i was like that's oh, two hours away and he's like oh well anywhere that you need to get in, that you want to get into like if there's a ski um area closer to you um i'll see if i know people or i can reach out to them and i can recommend you oh. um because i have more experience. I've been here longer. He was um, a snowboard instructor, so he was, um, uh, I think, awesome. Is that right? Yeah, he was. Um, he had connect more connections than I did because he was certified as a snowboard mm -hmm. instructor. He's like, I can get into the ski school and I can talk you up and all that. So you like sort of pull at your the resources around you. Use the network that you have at mm -hmm. home to see if they can help you sort of externally at college too. My job did that too, my summer job. I worked at a, the Tuxbury Country Club, 
And my boss always told me if there was ever a country club in Rhode Island, she could call down and make connections, let them know that I had previous experience working yeah. in a country club. I never took advantage of that because I didn't have a car, so I couldn't yeah. drive at the time. Um, but yeah, definitely ask your boss if they're friendly. Yeah, yeah that's uh, my buddy Logan. When we were, I guess technically when he was in high school, he worked for Borders, uh, which no yeah. longer exists, I don't think. I remember yeah. that. It was a bookstore, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's like the competitor for Barnes right, & Noble. Yeah. Um, and so he no worked there. Yeah, <laughs> now they're gone. Yeah. Uh, it's because Logan left working. <laughs> Uh, obviously, that's pretty obvious. He uh, jumped from high school into senior year. They used to have yeah. like downtown Burlington, and he was able to just pick right up and go there. Uh, <laughs> for that reason. So yeah, if you, if you have that option and yeah. it's a franchise or whatever it is, even if it's not a franchise, <laughs> like, yeah. uh, take take the opportunity yeah. to uh, reach out and yeah. use those resources. And even just talk to people. Talk to people you work for, your supervisors, your boss. Um, your managers and just be like, hey, I'm going to school in this area. And do you don't even have to like push for a job, but like they might be like, oh, my buddy runs this or that. And the other thing, you're like, oh, that's cool. Do you think, you know, they'd be hiring or they might be able to work for me? Because if you're doing a good job working for them and you're standing out as an employee, they're happy to recommend you to their friends and say, hey, this person's really good. You should, you want them on your staff. Mm -hmm. Um, they'll do good work, they'll do this through that the other, and all those other things. And then you, you're sort of secured um, as a reference mm -hmm. in a way. Yeah, definitely. And to add to that, um, I had two internships my senior year in the spring. Um, they both were paid, which was really nice. And I got both of those through mutual connections at the school. Mm -hmm. um, so I know people will say you should, you know, network yourself, make connections. And but it's really important to do that and just, you know, kind of make a name for yourself and, and be like a social butterfly, I guess. And, you know, um, it definitely can lead to some opportunities for you to make some money in college. Yeah, and check for on-campus opportunities that might not be paid. So one of the reasons I went to Champlain was the Champlain College Publishing Initiative, which puts students in the roles of actual publishing work. And I went to them my sophomore year and I said, I came here to join you guys. I didn't do anything freshman year. I need to do something now. I, I want to be part of this. And they said, we can't pay you because we, anyone who comes through here has to get work study and I wasn't eligible for work study. I said, all right, then I'll do an unpaid internship. I'll do this voluntarily. Like I, I want it. I came here to do this. So I'm going to do something with this. And based on the work that I was doing for that, I got two paid internships um, out of it. Well, I think it's one and a half because I did, a, it was a long internship and it paid me for half of it. <laughs> like the first one they were like, this is for credit. And then the second one they were like, oh, we'll, we'll start paying you now because we still need your we, we still need you to do stuff, so we're going to pay you money for this. And I was like, okay. Yeah, that's a, a good point, too. It's like yeah. starting to work for free, and then, like, as time progresses, people will be like, no, we actually we need yeah. you, and this is, like, a potentially a permanent position yeah. that opens up because of the work you're doing. Yeah. I had a friend that, that did that. He worked for, um, I think it was, like, it was a, a warehouse or something like that, some kind of manufacturing, and they pulled him on as an intern, and then they kept increasing his pay, and then they are like, you'll get a full-time job once you graduate, and I'm like, oh. Oh, I do that. <laughs> um, also, don't discount um, on-campus jobs that aren't paid through work study. So, um, thing, most on-campus jobs will do that, except um, like RAs. I don't think can be paid through work study. That's typically through the school, and you get other benefits from it. So, I was an RA for a year and a half. I kind of wish I'd done it longer because I got free room, so I didn't have to pay for housing, um, and we got a stipend every semester. So it wasn't too much money. Um, Did you not get food too? No, I don't think we got food. It was I just used to do food mm -hmm. back in the day when I was there. Mm -hmm. Not to put a thing in front of me. I was never around it, so I don't know if that's yeah. true. <laughs> but well, some schools do. Some schools don't cover housing, but they pay you more money. Right. Some schools cover housing in uh, room and board, but don't pay you um, because you're not paying. It's like fifteen thousand dollars a year um, or more, depending on what school you go to. Um, so it's. You have to like kind of look at the situation and if you're I, I for me i noticed that i was already being like more responsible to people when i was like kind of like the mom in my group and i was like you know what? I'm, I'm doing this i might as well just pay for it and i liked interacting with people it's not perfect for everyone but it was a job that i could get on campus that i didn't that wasn't tied to work study and a lot of jobs at champlain um and it's no no not a mark against them but it's you know, because it was a small campus, there weren't that many jobs outside of work study positions. And I couldn't, because I wasn't eligible for work study, I couldn't get them. 
um, I, we had to fight for me to get the position at the tutoring lab that I talked about the last time. So, so basically just look for like on-campus jobs that aren't tied to work study. Um, and that can be difficult, but things like being an RA, um, some people have like, some places have um, peer mentors and uh, orientation leaders, moving crew, things like that. Um, there might be smaller jobs, but still worth it. Question three is when trying to pick the right college and planning financial aid, what are the things you look into? And this question is by Beastie underscore zero eight one three. So I, when I was looking for schools, I wanted to get out of Massachusetts. Um, I ended up going to Rhode Island, so I was still in New England. But to me, that was really far because it was two hours. So that's like the first thing I looked for was I wanted to be like a good distance away from home. I wanted, that was like my way of getting out into the world. Um, and then I couldn't, I, I kind of had a budget of how much I knew I could spend on college. Um, because I didn't want to be in debt for years. I didn't want to be paying my student loans for years, which I probably still will be, but it's fine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I picked um, a state school in, um, in Rhode Island, and it was uh, a little cheaper, and then when I got the financial aid, I was able, it was more reasonable. So I think when you're looking at schools, kind of try to get, fill out the FAFSA so you know how much money you'd be getting, um, figure out what you're getting for grants and scholarships and then add that into the tuition costs. But I think definitely doing your research on schools and then knowing what kind of programs you want to do at the school. So like location of the school, um, how much money you can spend on the school and knowing what program you want to do at the school are all really important because if you go through this whole process and look for a school, let's say you want to do a specific like nursing program or um, something more specific like oceanography and the school doesn't offer you that and you get accepted and go to the school and don't figure it out until you get there, you're gonna regret that. Um, Cause transferring is a lot of work. <laughs> so just keep that in mind when you're looking. And then when it comes to financial aid, I wasn't very good at looking at scholarships at the time. I didn't think about it as much in high school. So I definitely recommend, you know, junior and senior year going to your counselors and just kind of figuring out how much money you want to spend again in, for college and figuring out what kind of scholarships maybe the school offers or your high school offers, um, your job offers, and just, you know, beginning that search, your junior year is going to put a lot of pressure off you as you go into senior year and have to fill out all those applications. Um, uh, so financial aid obviously means a lot for college. Affordability is a huge issue for a lot of students, um, especially with student loans being so crushing um, for debt. Um, but I just wanna say like, I, I know a lot of people who are like, if I could do it over again, I would have gone to X state school or I would have done to this to cut down costs and all that other stuff, or I wouldn't have gone to this school because they didn't give me as much scholarship and blah, blah, blah. Um, I have a decent amount of student debt. And I had, when I, when, I, when I was a senior in high school, I remember very specifically, I had the two um, acceptance letters and the financial aid packages in front of me. And it was Champlain and my second choice school. And I sat down with my parents, and if I had gone to my second choice school, it would have been $18,000 a year. That's it, um, with all the scholarship they gave me, and I probably would have a quarter of the debt that I have. Yeah. Or I could have gone to Champlain, and I was sitting there with my parents, and I was like, well, this is a better choice financially, and it's, you know, here are the reasons why I should choose it. I said, I like the campus, I like this, I like that. And my parents were like, well, what do you think of the program? I was like, it's, it's okay. And they said, well, what do you think of Shane Plains program? I said, I love it. This is, I really want to go to the school. And I said, well, go, go to that school because, you know, there are things you can do financially. There are ways to make it cheaper. And looking back now, like even with the amount of debt I have I, and knowing that my second choice school is actually higher, more highly ranked on the U.S. News and World Report and all those other things, I look back and I'm like, well, what if I had gone to that school? Maybe I would have done this. Maybe I would have done that. And then I look at the things that I do have from like going to Champlain, I have um, the friends that I have, I have the internships, the experiences that I have, and I think, well, I wouldn't have gotten those at this school. I would have gotten different ones, maybe better ones, maybe worse ones. Um, and I look back and I think, you know, what? I'm not, I'm not against taking on that debt. Um, it's it sucks, <laughs> straight up. But um, you know, being where I am now, I would not have gotten to this place. I wouldn't be working for College Express. I wouldn't be 
where I am physically and emotionally now without Champlain. And I, I think that definitely outweighs the cost of, or definitely outweighs saving um, that much money and having gone to that school for so much less. So affordability is super important. <clears throat> and for some people that can be the defining factor. But I personally, I say if, if you're going to be unhappy someplace, it's worth doing that extra money. Um, just because you you don't want to be depressed for four years to save. Especially if you know what you want to do. Yeah, especially if you know what you want to do. I went in undeclared. I had no idea what I wanted to do till like my junior year of yeah. college. <laughs> I ran in a while. Um, so it kind of just made more sense for me in that way to look at it at a money standpoint. Yeah. But yeah, you definitely, if you know what you want to do and yeah. you know the school has a great program and if you always had your heart set on that, then definitely you can find a way to figure out how to make it work, yeah. money. And if you're anyone, if any of you are like me, um, I didn't change my major three times, but um, I went in thinking I was going to do nursing. Um, I got there, was a graphic design student, and then trans, not transferred, but switched into business because um, I had like a midlife crisis my freshman year. Um, you know, not sure what I wanted to do. And, you know, it's really intimidating. I think at such a young age, um, you take on this responsibility of trying to decide you know, where your path will take you in the future. Um, and that plays a really big role in the college decision. Um, and so for me, I luckily I chose a school that offered many different um, yeah. majors that I was somewhat interested in. So I think, you know, um, when you're looking for schools that, you know, say you want to go for business and you're so set on that. I mean, who knows, you might start taking classes and you decide, oh my gosh, this might not be for me. Um, so I have a backup major. Um, I wrote a list of like top five, even though through a four and five, I wasn't like too keen on, but at least I know if I like went to a school somewhere and I liked my friends and mm -hmm. the professors and the atmosphere and the social life, um, at least you have some fallback options because I changed my mind so many times and luckily I wasn't stuck where um, I thought I was gonna do nursing and thankfully I did not choose that path, so. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, just going back to what Kara was saying, it's similar to my road where I knew what I wanted to do for major was, and so I, for me, that was the most important thing of finding a school that not only offered the major, but it was a program that I liked. Champlain did a great job by having that upside down curriculum and being like, you can get into those classes yeah. your freshman year, which to this day is still my favorite thing about that, that whole experience. But if you don't know, uh, if you have a vague idea of what you want to do in majors, Katie, you bring up a great point of having a few fallbacks because if you find a campus that you really like and it's in your budget, it's okay. Here's yeah. like here's my home, and I can fit into these different positions. Uh, that that's fantastic. Uh, I also think the location, as you mentioned, uh, Mackenzie, is, is huge too because depending on where you want to go, uh, you have that dilemma of in-state versus out-of-state yeah. tuition, and uh, the cost being significantly higher depending well depending on what school you're going to yeah. if it's a public school or not but impossible traveling fees you have yeah. to fly somewhere mm -hmm. definitely for yeah. traveling back and forth and uh so it really comes down to and what i wrote down is like my big takeaway is ultimately it comes down to your means and what you can afford and don't go bankrupt yeah uh have, have that option of Kara mentioning i had these two choices both i could afford yeah one was going to be significantly less for me in the long run for debt, and I wouldn't have to worry about it. But here's the program I really like that yeah. fit well in there, and I really enjoyed my time there. And you ended up going that route. And people could be on the complete opposite. Yeah. Like, you know what? These are the two. I actually want to be you know, a little bit more financially uh, stable yeah. so I can take the, that road. And I bet you, like you said, you're going to have two different experiences, but you're still going to come out with a great program. Yep. So that's not to knock any of the public schools, if you're in-state versus out-of-state, any of that stuff. Uh, find what you want to do. Find something that fits what you like. Make sure you have the money uh, and the ability to do it. Yep. And also, you know, like you said, go out and get scholarships. Yep. And uh, KD at a scholarship for being an athlete. So if you want to talk about that. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I play, have been playing sports my whole life. Um, picked up the field hockey stick, loved it. Um, and I wasn't sure if I wanted to play in college just because, you know, it's a very demanding um, schedule I'd have to follow. Um, I would commit myself for four years and I did play the highest level um, of collegiate sports. So I knew going into that, it was going to be I would sacrifice a lot of things, um, and I knew 
I have a twin brother, so my parents had to worry about both of us mm-hmm. going to college at the same time. Um, luckily, I was being recruited for to different schools, all different levels, um, and it just so happened that UMass Lowell offered me something that I couldn't refuse, and I kind of took that leap of faith. Um, you know, five hours away on my own. Um, I'm like training like crazy for this. I'm you know getting screamed at. I'm like sprinting with my team and like going through just like a bunch of different things. It was very overwhelming. Um, and for the scholarship process, um, you know, I just kind of kept an open mind. I think I wasn't looking for anything. I wasn't saying, okay, I'm only going to go to this school if they offer me X amount and more. Um, because I did want to take the opportunity to kind of pursue my passion and what I wanted to study. And, you know, I found a school that like fit like a lot of things for me. And, um, so it kind of took me this way and now I'm up here. So obviously it worked out well. Um, but so if any of you are, you know, trying to be recruited, um, looking into the whole scholarship and sports, um, Division One offers scholarships. Um, I think Division Two does it well, but Division Three does not for athletics. So you'd have to find an alternative route for that. Um, I think D three schools offer a lot of academic money, so that's a different alternative to the sports scholarship. Um, but I think in that in that sense, just keeping an open mind, and you know, you're being recruited for a reason. You have some athletic talent that someone sees, and they see potential in you, and so just kind of believing in yourself and going that route, um, take that leap of faith and just go for it. <laughs> when you were applying to schools, did you know you wanted to be a nursing major? Um, yes, so I my coach laughs at me because I was so set on that and I actually had to bring up, I think my SAT score and I ended up doing it and then like last minute I was like, you know what coach, like I can't do this, I'm not doing it, like I'm gonna do this and she, she laughs now because she's like, you were so, like, so sure about it. And I think I had like um, a certain instance where I was like, yep, I'm not doing nursing, this is not for me. Um, and so she was really great in helping me um, make the switch and figure things out because she was kind of like the bridge between me and the nursing school at my university. Um, and she was like, no problem, you know, moving on, we'll go to the next college and we can get you all settled in. I must have been so busy freshman year because the nursing program is really intense even freshman year. Right? Yeah, yeah. A lot of my friends um, on the team who are nursing majors, they ended up finishing strong four years of nursing and field hockey. I don't know how they did it, but you know they're superstars. So yeah. um, shout out to them. But it, it's just all about finding a balance between your sport and your studies. Um, so it with. You, you learn great time management, I have to admit, and the coaching staff was really great in like making sure we had, like if we had to go to a study hall, you know, no problem, you can leave practice early. So um, the importance of academics is of course like priority. Um, so being able to manage that was not as awful as I thought going into it. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, just to wrap everything up is, you know, finding the college and the financial aid, yeah. there's, a whole slew of options that you can yeah. do. If you're an athlete, you can potentially go down that route and find scholarships that are for you, and schools will pay you different amounts and whatnot. Uh, you can jump onto the College Express and mm-hmm. find everything. But again, I just want to drive home that point yeah. of find something that fits and isn't going to make you go bankrupt. Yeah. Otherwise, um, what's the point? Question four Do colleges offer in state and out of state students the same scholarship opportunities? And is there any way to get a scholarship for an out-of-state college? Um, this is from at um, Kayla Seavey. I'm really sorry if I butchered that. Um, really great last name, so I apologize. Um, but so for me, like I said um, earlier, I was recruited out-of-state for field hockey, so that was kind of my scholarship opportunity. Um, I did, you know, when I was in the scholarship search and like being recruited, I did kind of map out um, a few different areas where I was okay with looking for school. Um, originally, I thought Massachusetts was way too far for me. Uh, five hours, I was like, I can't do that. My family's in New Jersey. Like, how am I gonna make this work? And it ended up being like a really great fit for me. Um, so I'm really, I really lucked out with that. Um, so for me, you know, out of state tuition for Massachusetts was not incredibly bad. I did get a scholarship, so it brought that down. Um, but I was very conscious through this whole process of, okay, it's going to be this amount. Like if I get this percentage, like what would it be? Like how, what else can I do to kind of help that? Um, so I think a lot of universities, especially UMass Lowell, they, they take pride in getting people out of, um, Massachusetts to come to their school. They're all about like having diversity, different backgrounds, um, people with different experiences, um, you know, to just kind of create one whole, um, student body and so for me it they I think 
reached out and it ended up working out well. Um, but I do know my brother, he went to UNH and he was offered some scholarship for there. And he was also a civil engineer, so he got money for that. And um, I think he tried to hone in on being out of state and kind of bringing his um, passion to New Hampshire. So there's definitely a lot of opportunities for in-state, out-of-state, universities, small colleges, public schools, private schools. Um, and on College Express, they map all of that out. You know, if you ever need any guidance on what you're looking for, if you want to go out of state and you want to go to a smaller private school, um, there's opportunities for you right at your fingertips to kind of dive in and, and look into that and see if it can relate to you and if you want to move forward with that. So definitely use your resources for that. And now you're a Bostonian. <laughs> yep. Uh, I switched my license and my license plates last month. It's Ooh. officially official. Awesome. <laughs> Which is insane. And a Pats fan? Mm, well, it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> that far yet. Um, so do they offer um, in-state and out-state students the same scholarship opportunities? Not usually. But there are a lot that are specific to out-of-state students because, like Katie said, a lot of schools want to bring students from out of state. There are also reciprocity reciprocity programs um, that you can look into across different states. So for a lot of them, they have limitations, but it will severely cut down the amount of scholarship that you owe. So there are several, um, I want to say out in the Midwest and um, the Southwest or somewhere like, or the Southeast, but there are several of them where like the maximum out of state students can pay in the region is 1.5 times the in state tuition. Um, and there are also some schools, I think Massachusetts has one uh, where if a major is not offered at the school at a school in your state, that if there are majors in like the other places in New England that do offer that other college state colleges in the area that offer those, uh, you can go for the same uh, price as in state tuition. Um, so there are a lot of those programs you look into if you want to go someplace like nearby. So like if you're in Florida and you want to go to a college in Georgia, that's a state school, check into what reciprocity programs um, mm -hmm. are around for that because that can significantly cut, cut down your out of state tuition um, and things like that. Um, without you even having to do much effort, you mainly you just have to call and be like, hey, this is a thing. Are you going to honor it? And they're like, yeah, totally. We'll do that. Um, so look into things like that. and. Um, do, they're, like Katie said, there's just, oh, they want to bring in students from out of state because they want to say, we are just a Massachusetts college. We are a national college, essentially, because look at all the people we have. We're really famous. Look at us. We're the United States. <laughs> yeah, I think just to break it apart, too, on what's the difference between in-state and out-of-state and what qualifies. Pretty yeah. obvious with in-state and out-of-state, but what qualifies for the tuition yep. is for the majority of the times, your in-state colleges are going to be public universities. And the reason that the tuition is significantly lower than if you're coming from out of state is because while you're working, while your parents are working in that state, they're paying taxes to that school. So then when you're able to go to that school, they say, OK, you've been paying X amount to our school over the years. Here's what you get as yeah. a, a discount, yeah. uh, but you've technically been paying it. Uh, whereas somebody coming from out of state is you're not associated with that state. Yeah. so. Here's what the actual ticket tag is. Yeah. Uh, and as Katie mentioned before, too, on College Express, if you go to any one of our college profiles, if we have the data available, which a significant amount yeah. of the schools are, and that's one of our huge data points, you're going to see in-state versus out-of-state tuition right on the yeah. college profile page, as well as a list of scholarships that are tied to that school. Not tied directly, but you can apply for those scholarships to get money mm -hmm. for that school. So it's not like Champlain sponsoring a scholarship, yeah. but it's, hey, if you apply for the scholarship and you win, you can put it towards Champlain. Yeah. So that kind of loops all the way back to the first question and yeah. applying for scholarships and getting money. Uh, you can do that easily and see and compare what works. You can also right. check on the school's website. Yep. Yeah. They have mm -hmm. their scholarships on there too, especially for out of state. Mm -hmm. Just search that on there. Be easy to find. If you're like me and you, uh, don't know what you want to major in, but you definitely want to leave the state. You can Google search um, affordable out of state schools. <laughs> There's actually also an article in College Express about it. Mm -hmm. um, and that'll list some of the colleges around the country that have more um, are a more reasonable price. Yeah. Wow. So you can look those up if you're just looking to get out of your state. Yeah. <laughs> like I was. I honestly would go anywhere. <laughs> just wanted to change. Yeah. Um. I think, and just to also 
put a little bit of a caveat to for the in-state. Yeah. Uh, you have to prove that you're in-state and yeah. you can't just put down a street address and be like, hey, <laughs> yeah. I'm in-state. You have to actually provide proof. So uh, having like a driver's license or if it's your passport, which yep. is, uh, but you do need uh, proof of identification yeah. that you're from that state to get the benefits of in-state tuition, even if it's a pay stub from uh, yeah. the state that you're working in. But uh, That's a really good point. Sure. And a lot of schools will have um, lim not limitations. Yeah, limitations on how long you have to be living in the state. So, like, mm -hmm. if you just moved to Rhode Island, and you're like, well, I want to get Rhode Island State, you know, tuition. Um, they might be, like, six months or a year or mm -hmm. sometimes even you longer. Have there. You have to live there. You have to live there for um, that before they'll they'll eat. Um, you can't just be like, I live in Rhode Island now. I moved here last month. Give me in-state tuition. Because everyone moves to Rhode Island if they're going to college in Rhode right. Island. It's... I mean, that's, that's how you get there. I actually had a friend do that. Yeah. Um, he went to Clemson, South Carolina, and he, what did he do? He had, like, this internship. Mm -hmm. So he took a semester off to work there. Maybe it was a co-op type thing. Mm -hmm. um, and he ended up living there for about, I think that was his sophomore year. So once he got into his junior year, he, was, he because he was working in the state yeah. now, getting paid, he actually applied to become a citizen of South Carolina yeah. and did the whole thing. And, um... So I think his senior year, he was able to apply a discount to yeah. his tuition, and it ended up working out really well for him, which I didn't even know you could do. Yeah, so you can really do that if you, like, if freshman year, you're going to go to a state school, and you, like, get there, and you say, I like this state, I'm going to live here. Um, and you probably, like, get an apartment, you get a job, yeah. you change over your license and your registration and all that, you prove that you're dedicated to being um, a citizen in that state. I don't want to say citizen, though. Because it sounds like you're going to different countries. <laughs> if you're like a resident, <laughs> that, if that's you're a resident of the state, I'm like, citizen. Like, ah, like, this feels very. Like, we're all the same country. Who's <laughs> <laughs> the first president? Who's the governor? Um, yeah, that's, that's a question they should ask you. Who's the governor of the state? <laughs> a lot of people who live there probably wouldn't know. I don't think that. I don't um, think I know. No? I don't think I know. Massachusetts. Challenge. I'm, I'm still new. I'm still new. <laughs> you are still new. We'll, we'll give you that. Um, you but, You're out of it. <laughs> I didn't know the governor of Vermont was my whole time there. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Um, but no, yeah, but my so, family yeah. actually looked into it because we have a house in Hampton, and so we pay taxes every year. Yeah. So we thought maybe um, we could get in-state tuition for UNH mm -hmm. since we have a house there. Mm -hmm. And they actually wouldn't give it to us because... Um, there wasn't someone living there year round. They were very That's specific about it. So you can't just, even if you pay for the house and you pay taxes, mm -hmm. you have to. That's great, right. especially for, for New Hampshire because everything is property tax. Yeah. I mean, it's Everything you're is property not tax. Getting taxed on your work. You know what I mean? You're getting taxed on yeah. the house, but not on. But like all well, the, the money goes from the property yeah, tax. taxes True. we pay yeah. in New Hampshire. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, the parents are not there. happy. <laughs> exactly. It's it, insane. Yeah. 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 So, it, is not tax for like they have very low income taxes they don't do sales tax yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> but they their property taxes are huge I've heard yeah so I get double um, I don't know what a nice term for this is but I get doubly <laughs> slashed <laughs> yeah <laughs> where um, I pay the work tax in Massachusetts yep. for working here and then I go home and I have to pay the property tax but uh, it's like a Interesting trade-off. Yeah. I know we're not talking about college, and we're talking about property tax. <laughs> uh, it fits. It, it, yeah. It's adulting. It's all together. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, I guess, I don't know, just to like add another comment about in-state, out-of-state, um, I think it's important for you to kind of figure out, too, before you do the scholarship search, um, if you want to be in-state or out-of-state. I know um, a lot of my friends stayed in state, and it was kind of hard for me to leave them. And I kind of had like FOMO my freshman year because they all went to Rutgers, and um, they all saw each other. And I, you know, it would be hard to make a weekend trip, you know, to and from school. And um, I think I kind of took myself outside of my comfort zone by moving five hours north. And I really truly believe like it was one of the best decisions for me because I kind of you know, found who I am, what I want to study, what my passions are, and I kind of, like, you know, made new friends, and I really got involved in the little community, and it's it just, for me, it was a really nice kind of breath of fresh air, like you said, getting out of Massachusetts for you, getting out of New Jersey for me. I kind of wanted to dive deeper into, like, a new part of the country and kind of just explore things, and 
for me, that worked out really well. And I know I have some friends who stayed in New Jersey. They're very family oriented. They loved it. They are so happy, you know, home on the weekends, home cooked meal, laundry done by your mom, like freshly made bed, like all of the nice stuff that, you know, being at home um, provides you. So it kind of just comes down to, do you want to pursue going somewhere else, you know, kind of exploring a new area or would you rather stay in state, you know, great, get a great education and still be able to have time for family and friends. And then once you can kind of figure that out, choose a path and then start, you know, digging deeper into like schools, scholarship opportunities, you know, possible, um, like things around the school. Like we have Boston near us. We go to New Hampshire. There's a lot to do in the area. So that was also a nice benefit. Yeah. 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 Um, kind of going off that with the in-state versus out-of-state thing, uh, think of also the other cost of just like certain, um, scholarships apply just to tuition, uh, when it comes to in-state or out-of-state. So if you're going to like an in-state school, going back to Massachusetts, the John and Abigail scholarship that gives you free tuition, which is $15,000. It still costs $30,000 total to attend a mass state school if you're in state. So you're getting half off technically, but you still have to pay for room and board and taxes and fees um, that go along with your education. So if you're like staying in state and you can get an in-state scholarship that applies like just to tuition, think about the other costs for it. Like, are you are you family oriented? Are you gonna stay at home during the time? Because that will cut down your costs more. Um, or even if you're going out of state, if I were like, if I were going to UNH, I would probably stay at home um, because it's only, it's a couple, you know, it's an hour drive from um, where I live, but like it's only an hour and I could save $10,000 right. a year um, doing that. So consider those options as well. So even if it's not necessarily a scholarship, if you live near the border to another <laughs> state um, where there's this college right there, you know, maybe consider that as an option. Like it's not a real scholarship, but you are saving money. True. Thank you so much for watching the College Press podcast. It is the only college podcast that we know of. If we're wrong, correct us in the comments below. That comes out to you every single month at the first week of the month with a variety of topics all about college. So we hope you enjoyed watching and we want to thank Katie for joining us today. So thank you so much for bringing your instance. Yeah, thanks and for having me. Hopefully we'll have you on another podcast in the future well, at some I point. Know. I'm here. So, yeah, uh, let us know what you want to hear about next on the comments down below and like and subscribe so we can keep the lights on and keep rolling these. All right, thanks so much for watching. Take care.